As you might have already heard me say, I have been very much a potato for the past three weeks. I think I got dressed about two times, maybe three. I looked like this, the majority of it, minus eyebrows. But this week I am going to try to pick myself up and be a little bit productive. As you can tell by the title of this video that you have already clicked on, I'm going to make myself a New Year's gown for no particular reason. It is now January 11th. I wanted to do this for a few different reasons. Number one, I have not gotten dressed up in a really long time. I feel like looking pretty. Two, I've always wanted to make a dress inspired by this dress that Heidi Lamar wore in the film Zigfield Girl. Sort of celestial goddess. Along the way, we can kind of talk about 2020 in general, what I had planned as far as goals, what I ended up accomplishing. <laughs> Not to say I didn't accomplish career-wise pretty much what I was thinking, as much as my brain would like to discount that. Well, I'm almost at 700,000 subscribers. They all hate you. And then I guess what I would like to accomplish in 2021. Honestly, my life is really not uh, interesting. The most exciting thing that's happened to me in the past few months is a new restaurant opened up down the street for takeout. They have a mashed potato pizza that is just... freaking freezing outside and today is definitely a two-layer comfy sock day. <sighs> Don't come for me with the, you shouldn't put your feet on the internet. You know what? If that's your thing, power to you. I apparently have a thing for men in masks. No judgment here. So the plan for today, probably get dressed. Very brief sponsor section. Talk about the design of this dress. Start making this bitch. So I'm gonna start getting dressed. And meanwhile, here's sponsor Rachel. So today's video is sponsored by Function of Beauty Skincare. Some of you may have seen me talk about the hair care line before, but they have a new skincare line that just came out. I didn't really start caring about my skincare up until this past year. I always felt so overwhelmed because there's so many skincare products out there. I didn't know where to start. Much like their line of hair products, you go online and you take a short quiz. Tell them your skin profile, your skin goals. So my skin goals were to minimize pores, reduce breakouts, and reduce shine. It comes with this handy dandy info sheet to tell you everything you need to know. I ended up choosing the cleanser, the serum, and the moisturizer. It is currently winter in Massachusetts, so that means that this house gets um, hecka dry. So I use the cream moisturizer constantly. I use it every morning, every night. And of course, because it is Function of Beauty, it comes with your name on it, which is just so cute. So yes, that is Function of Beauty skincare. If you guys did want to check it out, there is a link in my description that you can use to get 20% off of any product or bundle. And you also get this cute little spa headband for free. The text is backwards so that only you can read it in the mirror. Huh? Thank you so much Function of Beauty for sponsoring this video and uh, let's see how non-sponsor Rachel is getting along with getting dressed. I've been seeing a lot of posts that are like 2021 is just 2020 with bangs as someone who literally cut bangs seven days into 2021. I would like to say <laughs> So first of all, let me go through the design that I'm kind of thinking for this dress. Okay, so for this dress, I definitely want to do a star themed with a little cape and little star trim. And I want to try my hand at making this headpiece as well. And one of the things I'm going to try to do for 2021 is be a little bit less wasteful. So I am actually going to be giving this dress away. I feel like a lot of times when I make costumes, I feel a little guilty about uh, leaving them in my basement and not ever touching them ever again. <laughs> I've decided what I want to start doing is giving away the costumes that I know I'll never wear. The person will probably have to be around my same measurements, which isn't necessarily fair but there's nothing I can do about that. So that's one way I'm gonna try to be a little bit less 
wasteful. I try to buy fabric from secondhand sources or when I need a specific fabric like I needed for this project. There are websites that sell dead stock fabrics. So that is exactly what I did for this project. First and foremost, from Fabric Mart, which is one of the websites that sells dead stock fabrics. And it wasn't too expensive, which is really nice. Oh, wow. Oh yeah, six yards polyester slash lycra stretch was $11.99 per yard. I love working with heavy satiny fabrics like this because they tend to drape well and very flattering on the human body as opposed to what? <sighs> So that is the main fabric, and then I got light blue tulle. Just, are you mad? I am your daughter. <sighs> Why did I make that noise? So this will be sort of the cape on the back that I can raise up. Those are the two fabrics. But as far as decorations, I went a little overboard. <laughs> Unfortunately, I did get all of this on Amazon. All this preaching I did about being sustainable and such, and then I just, just throw my money at good old Jeff Bezos. Sculpting wire for the headdress. Um, also, I ended up getting crystal balls that I saw some other YouTubers have and it makes little rainbows. I'm trying anything at this point, folks. Okay. So the rest of this purchase just straight up is stars and such. Let me introduce you to the ladies. This is Betty, classic beauty, reliable. Keeps tabs on everyone's birthdays in her agenda. This is Jaina, edgy. Once drop kick someone in a mosh pit. Gwenda, very bougie. Gives him the old razzle dazzle. Kinda sticky? What the f? Is this a build a bear heart? Lucy S. was once dropped kicked by Gina in a mosh pit. Lacey keeps the team together, had braces most of her adult life. And finally, Andromeda, a queen, a goddess. Paints still lives and always smells like cocoa butter. I suppose I should show you the pattern that I'm gonna use. That's probably a good idea. I probably should have done that first. Oh God. Reuse a pattern that I used back in the beginning sewing days, but make it vintage Daenerys. It is a 1940s evening gown. And yeah, this was one of the easiest patterns I've ever used. Four pieces for the dress. Um, and then you have, you know, the shoulder strap and a ruffle and the facings. <sighs> okay. Feels good to have a purpose to my days. <laughs> Potato with purpose. That's just about everything. And now I think it's time to get started. Okay, so unfortunately, I have hit a small road bump. Hmm. Well, Nick is talking, so I have to put on my little light that says I'm filming. Be quiet. It seems like I had almost like just enough fabric for this. I don't remember how big these actually were because it's basically the whole dress in four pieces. When I was doing the back pieces, I mistakenly left like just a little bit too much selvage at the bottom because I thought I had enough fabric for this. I didn't think to be really, really conservative with it. With it. I am just going to measure difference between where this ends and where the fabric ends and we'll go back on the back piece and just cut it a couple inches. Problem solving. It's great when you actually create the problem yourself, huh? Alright. First thing I gotta do here is insert the darts. And they're basically just triangles, kind of like this. And they look like this when they're pinned and ready to be sewn. And then you sew them.
the hair in my eye. Uh. Hello, I got dressed today. It is now the next day. Uh, I'll show you what I have so far. <laughs> Pretty much the base of the dress is finished. Have to do the straps, the facings, which are basically just gonna turn these raw edges inside out. Looked at the pattern pieces that I haven't cut out yet a year ago or yeah, was it a year ago? Uh, two years ago? I must have thrown the facings part of the pattern out. Basically what that means, I have to make facings of my own. I'm gonna take the dress trace. Facings basically mirror the top of the dress because you're supposed to layer it on top and then turn it inside out. So soft and silky. <laughs> Yesterday, just for shits and gigs, just pinned some of the tool just to see what it would look like. Perhaps little belts with this in the middle. I think I'm gonna work on the straps first. Okay, strap time. So I'm taking the strap pattern and one piece of fabric, folding it over, pinning it, and then you're just gonna sew along those pins. Once that is done, you can do the old safety pin hack where you attach a safety pin to one end Turn it inside out and then pull. Very satisfying. And then from there, I will iron these and make them flat. For the facing, like I said, I'm just going to trace the top of this dress on a spare piece of paper and then make sure it's all the same thickness across. And then cut it out. this is out of focus but you should be able to if you traced correctly just put it right on the outside of the dress with the straps sandwiched in between and then once you stitch them you should be able to turn it inside out and have those raw edges gone okay now keep in mind we will have a zipper this is the basic idea very pretty neck line is a little wonky right now because I still have to tack down the facing. I'm pretty happy with it so far. It does look a little prom dress right now, but I think once we add all of the little star details, it'll look a little bit more vintage. I cannot believe this is already this long. I already cut like two inches off of it, so yes, it's good that I had to do that. It is a very good run down the stairs of your castle dramatically dress. I was putting the dress back on the form and I just want to document this happy accident. Oh, wow. So I just wanted to take a moment, everyone, to appreciate um, gravity. Gravity appreciated? Okay. A lot more like Arwen than I had initially planned and I am a thousand percent okay with that. And then when I raise my arms, something like that. Very ethereal. Get it sewn like this and not move anything. And then of course, our little decal will go over it like so to hide the stitching. By and by, we will dine and we'll dance, then fly over to France in the sea. By and by, now we won't have to fear, there'll be no one to hear. When I whisper sweet love every night in your ear, I'll have you all alone, and you'll never walk home in a sweet by and by. Okay, so I put on all the trim. I also attached this to the actual band. I think it looks a little boring. <laughs> Call me crazy, but I think what I want to do is add some color to this. Because although this is light blue, compared to this blue, compared to this blue, it just looks white. And it just looks really boring. Airbrush 
some gold onto both the cape, probably the bottom of the dress, just because I could use a little spicing up. Nick actually got me a new airbrush, which looks a whole lot easier than what I was using. Mix some gold acrylic with some fabric medium. You know, normally I would just spray paint it, but if this is gonna go to someone else that isn't me, I might as well kind of do it a little bit proper. Uh, character development, right? I'm gonna give that a shot and we'll see how that works. The next morning. My agents sent me a Christmas gift, which is not a sentence I thought I would ever say in my entire life. It's a pack of like different kinds of coffee and then corresponding chocolate bars that go with each coffee. And I think I discovered uh, what my love language is. <laughs> Hello, my love language is sweets and treats. I felt like looking like a princess today, so I beat it. <sighs> All right, day three. The dress is almost complete. I just have to put a zipper on the back. Sir. Boop, boop. Can you um, not do that? So I tried to use the airbrush in my first attempt. Literally nothing came out. Uh, I definitely clogged it. To fix that, uh, ran some water through it and then made a second batch airbrush medium and that just dilutes it so that it actually goes through the airbrush. And it was working, but it, it just was, it was gonna take me absolutely forever. Ran out to the store and got this basically gold spray paint, but it's meant for fabric. So I did a quick test. Really love how that spackling looks. Really gold on the bottom and then kind of gradient up, maybe in different sections. Probably make most of this gold. And then we can start adding stars on here. Look, okay, uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. The cape looked like actual garbage. It looked like urine. Um, <laughs> I went and added some blue spray paint to the cape. So if you were, you know, making bets on if I was gonna cave and use materials I should not use on a dress, congratulations, like fantasy football except for irresponsibility. Start applying all of the stars. So I figured while we do that, we can have a little heart to heart. I'm gonna use a hot glue gun. So there's no way I'm sewing on five million individual stars. While we're doing this, let's go ahead and talk about Rachel's failed goals of 2020. Editing Rachel, if you could prepare the laugh track. You got it, boss. <clears throat> Rent a studio space. Go on a brand trip. <laughs> Join slash get accepted into the Rebel Legion. <laughs> Reach 500,000 subscribers. That we did do. Sell entire pile of clothing downstairs. <laughs> Attend a convention as a guest. <laughs> okay, I think we can stop that. It's getting a little depressing. Yep. To be honest, I was a little hesitant about actually setting any goals for myself this year. I feel like this year is gonna be so unpredictable. So instead of goals, I've just been kind of trying to think about practices that I wanna start doing in the new year. Number one, not overworking myself. Sometimes YouTube, I think, comes across as not a real job and that it's easy street. This past year, I kind of felt like if I wasn't making something, then people weren't gonna watch my videos. So I tended to overwork myself in that arena. If a video is sponsored or if you're working with a brand, you have to get them the video at least 48 hours in advance. Ow. The draft will be due on a Wednesday and I post on a Friday. Um, that means I have about two days to make whatever I'm thinking of making and then one day to edit. Some people have pointed out my time management is not the best uh, and that's because it's kind of impossible to time manage when you have such tight deadlines. This year, I am going to be a little bit kinder to myself and I'm going to try to set more boundaries and ask for more time if I need it. I, I you know, I'm tired of 
working all day and all night and sometimes all weekend. Secondly, clean up messes as I make them because I'm apparently five years old and need that reminder. <laughs> My other to-do is take Frodo for more W-A-L-Ks. When it's cold and even when I'm really busy and don't feel like taking him, that's not his fault. He's only on this earth for a very short amount of time and I want to make sure that I make it the best that I possibly can. I also started um, journaling. It's not exactly aesthetic or anything. Never really understood bullet journaling. Maybe it calms people down, but I just don't see the point in making it pretty if no one's gonna see it. I've also started exercising, which I hate. I've been having a hard time sleeping at night and I feel like it's because I am so bad at waking up early that by the end of the day, I'm not tired. I felt like exercising would be a good way to tire myself out. I'm still a firm believer that endorphins are a myth or that I don't have them because the only high I get is knowing that I don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> eh, it's kind of simpler than I thought it was gonna be, but. Ouch, Charlie. Wow, did I really just pull that one out of my brain? I guess if I were to set actual like attainable goals, they would probably be very similar to last year's. I really, really do want to work on my Leia costume and get my application in for the Rebel Legion. Basically, it's like a Star Wars cosplay group, but it's like the best of the best. You literally have to have a screen accurate costume uh, or very close to screen accurate. That scares the hell out of me because <laughs> I don't know if you've seen my cosplays, but... So I've been kind of just putting that off because I have a hard time um, with authority. So I just feel like I was brought into this world with a face that is somewhat similar to Carrie Fisher's and I almost feel like it's my moral obligation to make people smile as Leia and make Space Mom proud. Something I also wanted to do in 2020, but obviously didn't happen. Start doing hospital visits in characters such as Wonder Woman or Belle. Another one of my physical goals is to hit 1 million subscribers on here. Kind of like a crazy number to me and weirdly validating, which I know is kind of dumb. Almost feel like I have such a disconnect between my real life and then YouTube. And it kind of just feels like a hobby to me probably because I'm just filming in my living room. I think it's weird that there's actually people out there that watch my videos. Another one of my goals is just to try to continue being a good person. I wanna get more involved with charity, maybe do like charity live streams or merch for a specific charity. And I think if I hit 1 million, I'm definitely gonna do a charity live stream. I just have to kind of figure out the logistics of that because I'm really bad at it and I don't really have anyone to ask. I think this past year I was kind of extra sensitive comments online and criticism and that kind of stuff. I've always been really sensitive to criticism. I think it's the way I was raised, constantly critiqued, maybe because the numbers were going up. So the amount of those comments I got just obviously increased. My kind of feelings on that is that as long as I keep that disconnect between YouTube being my job and then like, my real life, kind of. I saw one of my favorite creators, she was talking about how she was getting so tired of trying to convince people what was in her heart. And that sentence really resonated with me because I feel like you could be the best person on this earth. You could be Mother Teresa. Someone will hate you. <laughs> if Mother Teresa had a YouTube channel, I bet you there would be people like this at their keyboard. Just waiting for her to slip up so that they can jump on and be like, Fifteen <laughs> twenty-eight. she has a stain on her skirt. I'm not bitter, you're bitter. <laughs> Just like, I don't know. Honestly, I don't care anymore. If that's what makes you feel better in this crazy world, be my guest. If you're someone that uh, point out when someone misspeaks or stumbles on a word, you're a garbage person and I don't want to be friends with you anyways. Sometimes my L's sound like W's and you know what? That's just my mouth. Did I do this inside out? Mm-hmm. Mother f I was watching a TikTok where some girl was cutting her hair, cut it super short, and she looked super hot. So many of the comments were like, 
I preferred it before. You look better before. No, oh my God, why? And I just, it blew my mind. I think in some ways TikTok can be an uplifting platform. Sometimes I see people supporting each other, girls supporting girls. And sometimes I just see people tearing others down. Let people get the haircuts they wanna get. Let girls have underarm hair. It's really not that hard to not be a dick. Aside from all of that, to say how grateful I am for all of you, I know it's easy to complain about negativity online and such, but for the most part, you are all so sweet and amazing and supportive, and the reason I can do this for a freaking job, I obviously could not do that without you. I am excited to keep making content that makes me happy and hopefully makes you happy as well. Oh, I should not have been sitting on my foot that whole time. Oh, just drop it off, Doc. That was a really long spiel, but I just had some things I needed to get off my chest. I just have a lot of feelings. I think I'm going to put on a podcast and just keep gluing. Okay, so I kind of just threw this belt together with some of that sculpting wire. Decided the length I wanted, made a hot glue bed and uh, attached one end and then secured it by making it double layer. And then I made a little hook out of that wire. As far as the headpiece, I'm using more of that wire and just simply forming it the way that I want it to look. wrap up i mean quick because it's freezing down here um yeah Ta -da. yeah i don't know i'll be honest it's not my favorite thing i've ever made but uh as i like to say it's certainly not the worst the dress itself it's really really comfy because it's super stretchy in fact i messed up a little bit on the zipper it stretches so much that i didn't even need the zipper i just left the zipper up and pulled it on i feel like i went astray with the little cape. I think it had potential, the idea had potential, but once I started mixing blue and yellow, it just got really muddy. I think if I had just chosen one, <laughs> I feel like I probably should have just gone dark blue with it and then had the gold stars, and I feel like maybe that would have helped. I'm not crazy about the actual cape itself. It's always a bummer feeling when you feel like you worked hard on something and then you're like not super psyched about the results. Whatever, I had fun. So that's all that matters. I like the neck piece actually. I feel like um, an alien or Queen Amidala. It looks a little bit like it says fix 2020, which was not the intention. I might have to do a little photo doctoring. And that's about it. First project of 2021, not my favorite, but you know. I'm excited to make more projects that I will be more excited about this year. As far as giving away this dress, keep an eye on um, my Instagram. Sorry that it has to be there, but I have no idea how to do giveaways on YouTube, so. Now I gotta go edit this. That is it. I love you guys, whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload every Friday and we have fun here. Here's to another year and I will see you in my next video. Bye. When I really struggle to hype myself up to film, I feel like there's only one thing that can solve that. So this dress, so yes, this. <laughs>
Why are there so many songs about rainbows? Jim Henson Studios. Uh, and then, yeah. Okay. What am I saying? Get that. Not for you. It's chocolate. Sit. I've gone through a lot of moisturizers. Moisturizers.